from there. And I'm going to talk about the details that um, I've I've been using in my work for a long time that I think is uh, are useful. So let's just start out with one that um, is uh, should be every edge should be treated this way, which is a chamfer. I'm just going to put a chamfer on this edge. Right now, this edge is very, very sharp. You know that sometimes an edge can cut you, even if, even if it's a 90 degrees, it can cut you. So a chamfer is one way to break that edge and create something that's more interesting. It also is a design feature that you can work with, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I don't know if I'm cutting with the grain or not, it feels pretty good. I'm trying to cut a wider and wider shaving. And what I'm trying to do here, I don't know if Gary can pick it up, is that the edge actually kind of glistens a little bit. There you go, you see it as a facet. And what I'm talking about here is this is a much, much more protected edge now from damage over time. And the other day I saw a piece of furniture that the edges weren't chamfered and it was all broken up and sort of just damaged even after only several, well, maybe like 10 or so years. So that is a, that's a, a single chamfer that runs end to end. Okay, that's not so difficult. But um, what about when you run into a situation where you've got um, a stock? What would that be? Well, you might have a cabinet and you're gonna do some sort of detail in the corners of that cabinet, such as the chamfer, and you've got to stop it before you get to the molding. So this is what I call a stop chamfer. And the way that works is, you come in here with a chisel, it's upside down, so to speak, the back is against the works, and you're levering out a shaving. And then you can use a spoke shave or a plane or whatever and chase this along. And the idea of that is, you can, you can see that and you know, when you get closer. You can see what I've done here. This is a little, a little chamfer that, that starts and goes down that edge. Okay, that's a simple one. One I use quite a bit. You can use the Craftsman, would use one with more of an angle associated with it, and then, uh, and then um, coming out to a flat. So one other, one other thing that I think about when I think about chamfers is use them to your advantage aesthetically. Let's say this is a stand-in for some sort of a curved piece. Let's say it's a headboard of a table or a headboard of a, a bed or whatever it is. We don't care what it is, but it's a curve. And I just shape this with a plane. Um, I can easily go, and I could use a spoke shape of this too, by the way, and I can shape this. I'm just gonna do it fairly crudely here. I can shape this into a chamfer that changes width. Again, it's crude. But if you can kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here, the, uh, I don't know if you can even see it. There you go, you see it there. The chamfer gets wider towards the end to my left. And what I'm trying to do there is make an aesthetic as well as a practical um, detail here, by which I mean, this curve looks more curved now because of the way I brought the chamfer down deeper at the two ends. So it's not a static chamfer, it's a changing chamfer, which is something that I particularly like. It's getting a little wider there in that end, you can see it. I didn't finish it completely. It's not even. If I wanted to get it even, I'd probably get a spoke shave and try and do it much more evenly along the side. So think about chamfers as something that um, leads into what I'm going to talk about next, which is um, you know, other edge details. But you want to protect your edges of things. Even uh, in a drawer, you know, I break all the edges with a plane, and you have to think about when you're going to do it. Usually, it's better to do some of those edges if you can before you assemble, so you can get into tight areas where two pieces come together. You know, like a, a, a uh, dividers, drawer rails, and case sides where they get to be tight, and you want to chamfer them, you want to chamfer beforehand. Um, by the way, a file is another really good tool for some of this work. If you have really bad grain, you can easily get in here with a file and file some of these chamfers 
Uh, that works very, very well. I don't like to use sandpaper because I think it doesn't leave as nice a surface, but a nice fine file, which this is, is a second cut, will actually do a nice job of taking that chamfer down into a polished surface. Okay. So let's jump into the more of the sexy stuff. And that is beads. And I've got a little cutter that I've made. I'll describe it, I'll make one. And what I'm talking about are these two profiles on the bottom edge here, these two beading profiles, okay? So this is a, a little hand tool called a scratch stock. The scratch is sort of the scraper that we're talking about, this, this cutter I just showed you. And the stock is a simple piece of wood. This happens to be a little bit fancier with a little thumb screw, but um, I used it for a long time. I just use a saw kerf and would drive it into a piece of wood. That works very nicely too. And a bead is a wonderful edge detail. I'm trying to project 100% of the bead, but I don't want the little square section at the bottom here projecting. That will create a different shape. See, no. See the little square section sticking out from the wood? You do not want that. You want just the bead. I think you get an astragal if you do that other one. So it's just projecting. And I like the system of these uh, cutters with a little thumb screw because you can adjust it very easily. And then this is a bead that you run along an edge. So let me just make sure this is a nice clean edge. Um, this is probably off the table saw. And it has to be a finished edge because you're not going to come back and do anything this later on or you lose part of the bead. And it's a scraping tool. So you use a scraping action to cut. Okay. Mike's on the camera. We'll see if we can kind of catch it here. So what you see right away is that I'm making little curls. That is a very good sign that I've got a sharp tool. A sharp tool is really key for this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a round edge here. So why not do a little work with a plane beforehand? It just makes the work go faster. A little more efficient tool than a scraping tool is a plane. And I can just go now and cut away. Now this has got a nice characteristic. I can also work backwards, so to speak. I can work either direction. Now this, particular surface that I'm doing does not have a depth stop. So let's say I have flattened this surface out, which I have, and now I'm running a bead along the bottom of, let's say this is an apron or something like that. I'm gonna scrape until the red of the pencil just disappears. And when that happens, I've got a bead cut. So there's that bead, yeah. okay? What I like about this bead profile is, that it rounds this edge, just like a chamfer does. So think about this as being the apron of a table and you come and you rub against this, you know, you're sitting at the table, whatever it is, and it rounds that edge, so it protects it the way a chamfer does that I was talking about. It outlines the edge in a nice way. It highlights the edge. This is a great detail that shakers use on all their trim work. And a lot of the times they would be doing that work with molding planes. And I happen to have a lot of molding planes that do beads. There's a typical one right here in my tool chest. So this is a little molding plane that does that bead profile. Okay, so it does. This happens to be a 3 sixteenths, I think. Yes, yeah, 3 sixteenths. So, and I have a half a dozen of them here of different sizes. The, the deal is that that's limited. Um, in terms of, first of all, most of these molding planes were never designed for hardwoods. They're mostly designed for, uh, you know, construction, uh, softer woods, a pine and the like. And they, they work great for that. But when you get to hardwoods, let's say like ebony or curly maple or whatever, this scratch stock really excels. Now you can't feel here, but if I had someone that could feel this and tell you, it's not polished, 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 because it's a scraping tool. Scraping never produces the polish that a plane does but it's just something that you very, very light sanding will polish this back up. So one of the things that I can do is I can rest the cutter on a, the front set of edges and cut in the forward direction. And I can use the back set of edges and cut in the rear direction. Well, that is a hugely advantage to you. How many bi-directional tools do you have in your shop? Um, the only one I can think of, the two that I can think of is a pencil and a screwdriver. 
Everything else sort of tends to cut in one direction. So if you can go in either direction, that means you can work with the grain. And if you're working along some surface where the grain changes, you just change the way you cut. So let's go and make one of these cutters and I'll come back and explain all about them so you have the ability to make one for yourself. 